The horizontal section of the oscilloscope is also known as the horizontal sweep or the horizontal time base. Remember how the graticule was divided into vertical divisions? Well, it's also divided into horizontal divisions as well. There are ten major horizontal divisions and the usual subdivisions within each major division. And uh, if you recall the uh, uh, volts per division control that we used before to set the number of volts per division, well, there's also a seconds per division control right here. And that sets the speed of the horizontal sweep. Now, right now, the horizontal sweep is set on one half uh, second per division. That means it takes one half second for the beam to move each division as it sweeps from left to right across the face of the graticule. The next step up is two tenths of a second per division. That means that it takes just two tenths of a second for the beam to move across each division, each horizontal division. The next setting is one tenth of a second per division. Now remember there are ten horizontal divisions and as you can clearly see it takes one second for the beam to move from left to right across the full width of the graticule. The next step faster is in milliseconds. That's thousandths of a second. And it's 50 milliseconds per division. That's 50 thousandths of a volt for the beam to move one horizontal division. I'm sorry, 50 thousandths of a second for the beam to move one horizontal division across the face of the graticule. The next step is 20 milliseconds per division. And after that, 10 milliseconds per division. And as you can see now, the beam is flying so fast across the screen from left to right that it's starting to look just like a solid line. Remember that 5, 2, 1 sequence that we saw previously? Well, here's the same thing in the horizontal time base or the horizontal sweep. Right now we're on 10 milliseconds per division. The next step, 5 milliseconds per division. Lost my probe here. Well, it's starting to move so fast now that we can speed it up more and, and, and it's not going to look like much. So let's take a look at a signal now and this is the signal coming out of my little test box that I have down here. Let's speed up the horizontal sweep and see if we can make some sense of what we have on the screen. There's two milliseconds per division. One millisecond per division, that's one thousandth of a second for the beam to move across each horizontal division across the face of the graticule. There's a half a millisecond per division, 0.5 milliseconds per division, and I'm starting to see the, the individual peaks that make up the waveform. Next step, 0.2 milliseconds per division. Again, the sequence is 5, 2, 1. Here we're on 0.2 or two tenths of a millisecond for each division. There's one tenth of a millisecond for each division. And we can clearly see the, the waveform that, that's being generated by the pattern generator. Now we move up into the microsecond range, millionths of a second, microseconds. And the next step up is 50 microseconds per division. Now remember, it's really just a beam moving from left to right. And as the beam moves from left to right, the vertical amplifier that has the signal coupled to it is making it move up and down. And what we see is the triangle wave that we looked at earlier. Now we're on 20 microseconds per division, 20 millionths of a second per each division. Uh, at this point, we're moving so fast, that is to say the beam is moving so fast that we're going to stretch this waveform out to the point that we won't even be able to recognize it. Um, this pattern generator is generating a fairly slow signal compared to what this oscilloscope is capable of, of reproducing. This is a 100 megahertz oscilloscope. That means that this oscilloscope is capable of displaying usable waveforms up to 100 million cycles per second. Right now we're on 20 microseconds per division, then 10 microseconds, 5 microseconds, 2 microseconds, 
one microsecond per division. You can't really tell what you're looking at here even. That's one millionth of a second for each horizontal divi division. Then half a microsecond, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And finally, the fastest speed is 0 0.05 microseconds per division. In fact, the beam is it's falling by so fast, I actually have to turn up the intensity to even see what we're looking at. Um, and, and what I see is a tiny little bit of what's known as ringing over here. It's, it's, really, um, it's really barely discernible and, uh, and, and uh, nothing unexpected, certainly. But right now, this beam is moving really quickly from left to right. 0 0.05 microseconds per division. That's 50 billionths of a second for the beam to move each horizontal division on the graticule. Quite often, the waveforms that you're looking at are what's known as periodic waveforms. That is to say, the waveform will repeat itself uh, after a certain period of time. Uh, let's take a look at a typical periodic waveform. This is that sine wave that we looked at earlier. Remember, that's what your uh, household AC power looks like, a sine wave. And uh, we can see that it's the same pattern over and over and over again. We can measure the period of the waveform. And, and tell exactly how long it takes for that waveform to happen. And, and it's real simple. First of all, you want to line up the waveform so that it's along some easily recognizable point along the graticule. There's a horizontal position control that enables you to move the beam um, left and right on the face of the graticule. And just pick a convenient point. For example, it's pretty obvious that this point and this point and this point are all exactly the same. Here's where the waveform repeats. Or you can look at it down here, where the waveform repeats down here. Just find some convenient place on the waveform that is obviously the same point over and over again. Um, and use the horizontal position control to line it up. For example, if we line this peak up, this positive peak up on, on this line right here, let's count the divisions. One, two, Three, uh, a little more than three. It looks like about um, it looks like about three and a third or so. Let's see if we can get a little more accurate. Remember, there are subdivisions here, and if we use the vertical position control to drop the peak down, where we intersect the subdivisions, we can take a better look at it. And uh, here, I see, again, I see one, two, three major divisions, and it looks like one. Uh, about two, about two subdivisions. So it looks like it's uh, somewhere around 3.2 divisions, 3.2 uh, divisions. What does that tell us? Well, we need to go over here and look at the, uh, at the seconds per division control and see where that's set. And at the moment, it's set on 5 milliseconds per division. That's 5 thousandths of a second per division. We have uh, th about 3.4, actually 3.4, 3.2, 3.4 divisions there times um, 5 milliseconds per division. And again, instead of doing the math, the easiest thing is to simply calculate it out. It's on 5, I mean uh, count it out. It's on 5 milliseconds per division. So you say, well, look, here's 5, 10, 15, uh, maybe 16 and a half or so, 16 and three quarters milliseconds, something like that. Well, I happen to know that it is, in fact, 16.66 milliseconds. Um, and I know that because that's the period of our standard 60 cycle or 60 hertz AC power. 16.66 milliseconds is the period of our 60 hertz power. And it's a number that you're going to come up with, uh, come up against again and again when you're troubleshooting. So it's a number you'll, you'll learn to recognize. And, uh, and here we have uh, just over three divisions, and it looks like about uh, 16 and a half. And remember that oscilloscopes are not particularly accurate when it comes to measuring not only voltage, as, as I mentioned earlier, but also the period as well. And you end up saying, like I just did, well, it's about three divisions, eh, a little bit more, and it's like 16 and a half, 16 and three quarters, somewhere in, in that range. And that's really as close as you ever have to get for our applications. 
One thing that can help you uh, measure period properly is to use a waveform that's reasonably spread out. You need to be able to see at least two peaks. And for instance, in this case, I really can't tell where it repeats because I don't see two peaks. Um, and so uh, I, I, I set it up right here. If you have the seconds per division set too slow, and you'll see uh, quite a few peaks, um, you may think that that makes it easier for you and you might be able to line up a peak on one of these major uh, divisions that way, but the closer they are together, the less accurate you will be. So you really just want to see, you really just need to see one complete cycle in order to tell the period. But here, I, I can't really tell what one complete cycle is. Apparently, well, I, I could kind of tell actually because certainly from here to here is one complete cycle. For example, um, we're on two milliseconds per division right now. And if I set this up, here's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. But I can't really tell where the waveform ends at that point. And so I, I wouldn't really trust it. I like to see at least a couple of good complete cycles so I can tell for sure what the period is. Well, I'm sure it comes as no surprise to you that 60 hertz or 60 cycles per second is the frequency of our, of our AC power, our 120 volt AC power line. But how are frequency and period related to each other? Okay, you math majors, this one's for you. Frequency and period are inverse reciprocal functions. Now, Hang on, don't freak out. It's, it's not really uh, all that complicated. In fact, it's pretty darn simple. One divided by the period will give us the frequency. And one divided by the frequency will give us the period. For example, our period is 16.666 milliseconds. It's actually 16.66666 milliseconds. One divided by 16.66 milliseconds, which converted into seconds, don't forget, is 0 0.016666 seconds. Remember, it's 16 milliseconds, 16 thousandths of a second. So it's 0 0.01666. One divided by 0 0.01666 equals 60, 60 hertz. 60 cycles per second, that's our frequency. On the other hand, one divided by 60 equals 0 0.01666, 16.66 milliseconds, our period. So it's, it's really simple. One divided by the period equals the frequency, and one divided by the frequency equals the period. Let's take a look at a couple of other examples. Uh, let's take another look at the sawtooth. We saw this guy previously. And uh, here you can see that it repeats from here to here. Uh, again, you know, I could have it smaller like this, but uh, it'll be more accurate and easier to, to, um, to count the divisions this way. And if I, if I move the, uh, the waveform using the horizontal position control and line it up, I see that I have one, two, three, four divisions before it repeats. The seconds per division or horizontal sweep control is set on 50 microseconds per division. So it's 50, 100, 150, 200 microseconds is the period of this waveform, 200 microseconds. One divided by 200 microseconds, and that is 0 0.0002. One divided by 0 0.0002 comes out to be 5,000. That's 5,000 hertz or 5 kilohertz. That's the frequency. On the other hand, if I take one and divide it by 5,000, I end up with 0 .0002 or 200 microseconds, which is the period. Now, in the real world of technicianing, uh, you very rarely have to actually make those calculations. And when you're dealing with game repair, jukebox amplifier repair, uh, you will never have to make those kind of calculations. Essentially, you're just looking to see if the waveform is there and what it looks like and what the voltage is, and, and you really don't have to worry about